بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله إن شاء الله سنة by Imam Babahari رحمه الله تعالى we were discussing the punishment of the grave and I wanted to bring about a couple of فوائد some ahadith of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم which further affirm the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a, which is that there is comfort and there's punishment in the grave depending upon the status of the human being who deceased. And this is pertinent to the 18th point where Imam Baba Hari Rahimullah Ta'ala said to have faith in the punishment of the grave and Munkar and Munkar and Nakir. Speaking about the two angels. And some of the ahadith which mention the punishment of the grave. For example, the Prophet والسلام, said in Sahih Al Tabarani in Al Kabir, he made the dua, he said, Seek Allah's punishment from the punishment of the grave. Since punishment of the grave is true. And this was a hadith from Um Khalid bin Khalid ibn Sa'id ibn Al As. In another hadith, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Everyone who dies, then his actions are sealed except for the one guarding the boundaries in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His actions continue to increase for him until the day of resurrection and he is saved from the trials of the grave. And this is was reported in Abu Dawood, with Tirmidhi, with Hakam, and in this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the shahid is, is that the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam said, seek refuge in the punish, from the punishment of the graves. Or he said that his, that a person's actions will continue to increase for him until the day of resurrection and he is saved from the trials of the grave. So that is evidence that there is punishment in the graves. The Messenger of Allah said in another hadith, Verily the grave is the first stopping place for the hereafter. So if he is saved therein, then what comes after it is easier than it. And if he is not saved therefrom, then that which comes after is more difficult. And this was graded as Hassan, uh, collected in uh, a tirmidhi and Ibn Majah wal Hakim. The Messenger والسلام, also said, that was collected in Tirmidhi, والسلام, when the dead person is buried too black, Blue angels come to him, or blue-eyed angels, as some translate. One called Al-Munkar and the other called Nakir. And they say to him, what have you used to say about this man? So he says what he used to say, Allah's slave and messenger. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they say, verily we knew that you would say that. Then his grave is widened for him to the extent of 70 cubits by 70. Then it is made light for him. Then it is said, sleep. So he says, I should go to my family and inform them. So they say, sleep, as a newly married sleep sleeps, whom no one awakes except his favorite wife, until Allah raises him up from that place of sleep. And if he is a hypocrite, a munafiq, he says, I heard the people saying something, so I said it too. I don't know. So they said, we knew that you would say that. So what is said to the earth, crush him. So he is crushed until his, uh, his ribs cross over and he remains in the state of torture until Allah raises him up from that resting place. And this is collected uh, and was uh, declared uh, Hassan in Tirmidhi. Ayyullah habati fillah. There are many ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
which illustrate for us and affirm for us the punishment of the grave. And this is how we know this ilm al ghayb This is ilm al ghayb And the mu'min believes in that. That's why it is first and foremost uh, the creed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Because Ahl, Ahl Sunnah, Ahl, Ahl Iman, Ahl Fiqh, Ahl Hadith, Ahl Athar, the Salafiyun, they take their creed from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all their actions and deeds. And they believe in the ghayb. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem alif lam mim thalik al-kitab la rayb fi hudun lil-muttaqin alladhina yu'minun bil-ghayb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says alif lam mim thalik al this this is a book in which there is, contains no doubt hudun lil-muttaqin and it's a guidance for those who have piety and then Allah gives a description of those who have piety piety the muttaqin those who believe in the ghayb, they believe in the unseen. That's the sifat of the mu'min. And that's why the mu'min believes in, in those Quranic verses, and the mu'min believes in those ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, although he's never seen or felt or witnessed any of those actions. How many of us have seen Evidence of the torment of the grave, probably not many, if any. So Ayyullah Habatif Allah from the characteristics of characteristics of Ahli Iman, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is that they believe and affirm the torment of the grave. They believe that it's real and that it is something that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and first and foremost our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about in the Quran and in the authentic sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another mas'ala ayyullah habati fillah uh, arises that the scholars mention. And this mas'ala or this issue is how adab al-qabr o na'inihi ala ruhi o ala badan is, this issue is does the punishment of the grave or its comfort happen to the soul or does it happen to the body? So this is an issue, Ayyul Ahabbitifillah, and we'll look at what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said about this. Qala'i uh, Shaykh al-Islam, madhab salaf al-ummah wa i'imtaha anna al-adhaba o na'ima yahsul li ruh al-mayt والبدني وأن الروح وأن الروح روحه تبقى بعد مفارقة البدن منعم منعم منعمة أو معذبة وأنها تتصل بالبدن أحيانا فيحصل له معها النعيم Shaykh al-Islam rahmatullahi said with regards to this issue he said that the madhab of the salaf and the, and the great imams of this ummah, of this nation is that the punishment or the comfort that is felt in barzakh you know, in, the, in this next stage of life this next ap- entering the afterlife, that this, that this, uh, that the soul of a dis- of this, th- this happens to the soul and the body of the deceased, and that the soul remains after it leaves the body, either in a state of comfort and pleasure, or a state of punishment and torment. And that sometimes the soul returns to the body in order to either feel some of that comfort or feel some of that punishment. This is what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, rahmatullahi with regards to this issue. Another issue, ayyallah habitifillah, 
is uh, what Ibn al-Qayyum rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned pertaining to the uh, three stages after uh, three stages of life so to speak he said al-ula dar dunya wa hiya mahal al-amal wal kasab min khair wa shar he said the first stage or the first existence is the life of this world this worldly life this worldly existence that we're familiar with and this is the place for doing deeds and earning from good and evil. And that's why Ayyullah Habitifillah, as we mentioned in countless durus, that the Salaf used to say, A dunya darul amal, wal akhira darul jaza. That this life is the time for doing deeds, for earning, doing righteousness, doing good. And the hereafter, it'll be too late for you to do anything. And it is the Dar al Jaza. It's the time you'll be recompensed for what you did in this life, whether it be good or evil. The second level, Ayyullah Habbati Fillaw, second stage that Ibn al Qayyim mentioned, he said, Dar al Barzah. Will he a Dar al Mu'akita? Will he have a Yukhti Ilahad? Ibn al Qayyim mentioned the second. Uh, the second stage or the second the second stage as Darul Barzakh and that's the life of Al Barzakh and that is once a person has de deceased and then they enter into this world this is part of the ghayb Ilm al ghayb that we mentioned that the mu'min believes in because we haven't met anyone who's had that chance really to experience al barzakh we've heard of people having near death experiences or that they died and they were resuscitated or what have you and they had various experiences however we really don't have much concrete worldly experience with al barzakh so we believe in it as a part of our iman bil ghayb from Akhbar, Akhbar of Allah Azza wa Jal, when Nabihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's how we know about these things, Al Barzakh, and the life in Al Barzakh. And Ayyullah Habib Tifillah, I want to mention something that you hear, unfortunately, some of the slandering Sufis, extremists. One particular individual who lives in Syria, and he speaks about. Ahlul Sunnah and some of the du'at saying blatant lies about Ahlul Sunnah wa'iyadun billah but one of the things he mentions and he's firm about and he doesn't even bring the issue because what he declared but what he intends is something else he was speaking ayyullah habitifillah about uh, al-barzakh and about the death of the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and he was saying that the Prophet ﷺ never died. And he was attacking Bilal Phillips and attacking other people, uh, saying that they made huge mistakes in this issue, which was based on his kadab, his lies. And this is due to the fact, Ayyullah Habbati Fillah, is that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een were there when the Messenger of Allah وسلم, died. And Abu Bakr عنه, when he said in a very famous statement, when because Umar refused to believe that the Prophet والسلام, died, and out of his ghira, he raised a sword, he wanted, he said basically to paraphrase, I'll have your heads for whoever says that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is deceased. And Abu Bakr had to bring him back and calm him and let the people know. And that's why he, radiallahu ta'ala, 
said what to paraphrase whoever believes that uh, whoever worships Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is what Abu Bakr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said the best of the salaf of this ummah he said whoever whoever worships uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has died Abu Bakr used the term death Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam died alayhi salatu wassalam but does he live in Barzakh? Naam. Alayhi salatu wassalam. We believe in the martyrs and so forth. But their life in our Barzakh is not like the life in this dunya. So we don't make an ahkam related to that. There are no ahkam related to that. We don't pray to them. We don't say the shuhada and the awliya, the, the salihin, uh, the, 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 uh, the messages, alayhi salatu wassalam, that they live the life in our Barzakh, so we're going to pray to them. So we're going to ask and seek from them. And this is where you find those extreme Sufis going. So we don't disagree about that stage that there is another type of existence and life that they live. As Allah mentions in the Quran about the Shuhada, Belhum Ahya, that they're alive. But are they alive? in the life that we know of? No. They are alive in our barzakh, which we have very little knowledge about. We only know in as far as the nasus lead us. So don't spend your time and effort praying to the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Prophet Jesus Alaihi Salatu Wasallam or Moses Alaihi Salatu Wasallam or Ibrahim or any of the prophets alayhim after salatu was salam. But spend and direct your time worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal. And there are many evidences, even the Quran, that show the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died. The the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that verily they will die and barely you will die. So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, would die. Alayhi salatu wasalam. And the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in were there to witness that. Ayyullah habbatithullah. The third marhala or state of existence that Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said he said, Dar al Qarar. Dar al Qarar. Will he a Jinnah? Well, no. And so he said, and then he mentioned the ayat, Wa inna al akhirata hiya dar al Qarar. Dar al Qarar. In Surah Al Ghafir. Dar al Qarar, ayya al Habitatillah is the eternal life the life that will remain so those other life our life in this world is temporary it's for a short period of time we live we do some deeds we're forgotten we're covered up hopefully we left behind good and that's that the next stage is al-barzakh which is also a temporary life a temporary existence and we can't describe it except in the way that it was described in a hadith as far as tafsil and details. Authentic hadith. And the third is Dar al-Qirar. And this is the eternal existence. Everlasting life. Either in Jannah, in paradise, with all those beautiful rewards and beautiful things that the mu'mineen will see their Lord Yom al qiyamah as we already mentioned and that is one of the great ziyadah or ziyadat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised the mu'mineen from his fadl subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise the hellfire it's also in eternal for the munafiqun, those hypocrites. 
for those who disbelieved in Allah Azza wa Jal or what his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with those who were on kufr and shirk and those things which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala hated that expelled them from the religion then that will be their permanent existence وَعِيَذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ May Allah protect us and our families from that May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless us and our families with guidance save us from the adhab al-qabr wa-adhab al-nar wa-fitnat al-mahya wa mamat and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm nafi rizkan tayyib wa amalim wa taqabilin and our non-Muslim families and relatives may Allah guide them to Islam and bless us all to meet in Jannah to Fardos and anything I said that was correct was from Allah azza wa jal anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaytan وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم